hey loves welcome or welcome back to my channel today guys i'll be checking out this interesting video from sky news australia and it's titled completely appalling douglas murray condemns riot region across the uk you guys i'm excited for this and without much ado let's see what this video is all about joining me now is best-selling author douglas murray douglas let's start with the uk riots Keir Starmer, the police the media have all been clear who they blame for the unrest the far right they say fueled by disinformation online there's even suggestions of banning uh, platforms like x and cracking down further on free speech is that the answer to what we are seeing, which are really clearly deep underlying issues in communities across uh, the country from uh, well, places like Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, Rotherham, Middlesbrough, London, and even as far as Belfast in Northern Ireland? Well, yes, this all started after a young man, a 17-year-old, uh, stabbed to death three girls at a Taylor Swift themed dance party in the town of Southport. And the wow. sense clearly in the immediate aftermath of that, this is an observation, was that the authorities were withholding the identity of the suspect. Now, there are some reasons why they might do that. Uh, but obviously, tensions locally were extremely high, feelings were extremely high. And uh, the way to try to control the information obviously completely backfired as, as you would expect it to and that's led to these riots uh, across city after city uh, in the uk it's extremely disturbing these riots of themselves provoked counter riots where identifiably muslim young men some armed have been also shown on camera uh, attacking people in the streets. And this is really uh, just a completely appalling, and I'm sorry to say this, completely predictable yeah. uh, situation. Indeed, I can mm. say it's predictable because I said exactly this sort of thing would start happening seven years yeah, ago or so in my book, it. The Strange Death of Europe. So it's horrible to be yeah. proved right in such circumstances because you don't want to be proved right about something like this. You want people to listen and change their policies. But, you know, the last few days have shown the Labour government refusing uh, to concede that there is anything other than what they call far-right violence going on. They claim that there isn't a two-tier policing system in the UK, which everybody with their own eyes can see is not the case. Clearly, there is a two-tier uh, policing system in the UK. Uh, these areas where this has happened in, what's more, are all areas where there were riots in 2011. And uh, as I write mm. in The Spectator this week, one of the interesting things about that is that all of these areas are, among other things, areas where migration has continued to increase and joblessness has gone up. Now, just think of those two factors, anyone watching. Wow. You keep uh, um, forcing immigration onto these areas and you do nothing to improve the lot in these areas. Of course, nobody right. should be on the streets. The the yeah. unbelievable hooliganism and thuggery of recent days should repel everybody. But, you know, very often when there is some kind of violence or unrest, we hear political leaders and the, the wise heads in the commentariat saying we need to address underlying causes. Why has nobody said that in recent days? And you're so right. You remember the media coverage in 2011, uh, uh, very different to what we're seeing now. And also throughout the BLM uh, unrest that we saw not too long yes. ago, again, there was a great deal of sympathy for those who were behaving violently and uh, uh, and certainly weren't peacefully protesting. I now, there are various segments of, of the left in the UK blaming uh, X, uh, formerly Twitter, for inciting violence. But Douglas, it's one of the few places where you can see what is happening on the ground without That's that right. media spin. That's right, Rita. Well, you guys, what are your thoughts on this video? Douglas Murray has always said so much about immigration and where it will eventually lead to. And this is exactly what he has been talking about for so long. And I don't know if this is going to be the end. 
one thing about douglas murray is that he doesn't just pick the fact but he actually sits down to analyze a situation and the future repercussion of that particular situation and whenever douglas murray talks about illegal immigration he has always hinted on this kind of protest happening in the near future and here it is today and once again douglas murray is so so right but let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below do you think the uk can control this riot that is going on right now or there is more to come i really want to hear your thoughts on this particular one and let's continue watching you guys that's right rita i mean I, i've just seen a report from uh, another so-called mainstream channel in the uk uh where the the quite clearly um the 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 journalists are trying not to reveal part of the story what they're trying not to reveal is what mm. they call asian men in the area intimidating and harassing journalists well th these aren't you know once again you get back to the endless euphemism and lying that is just prevalent across our media these are not you know hong kong residents who have decided to go out and threaten people they are, regrettably, organized Muslim groups. And, you know, they're being whipped up by mm. people, presumably in their community, but also by left-wing and other activists, obviously by the people on the street as well, uh, to come out in force. Mm. Now, the idea that the answer to that is to crack down on Twitter, the X, is an absolute case study of the failure of the political class in the UK. I remember in 2017, uh, when uh, three Muslim men went across London Bridge slitting people's throats and shouting, this is for Allah. And the mayor of London then, then, and the then Prime Minister, Theresa May, came out and said that this is, we need to address online radicalization. You know, and then Theresa May set up an inqu uh, um, uh, somebody to look into the definition of extremism. You know, what have they actually done in all of these years? Absolutely nothing. And it's it'll be the same with this. Uh, they'll they'll lock some people up, and they will um, demonize all sorts of people, and they'll cover for others, but they will do nothing to address this. The British public have been begging for years for consecutive governments to bring down immigration and to increase opportunities in the UK. Um, not only were they not mm -hmm. listened to, they were reviled, insulted, and much more. And, you know, it also needs to be said, each of the towns in which these uh, uh, awful riots have been occurring are all places that are resonant with huge crimes that were covered up by almost everybody in authority. I'm thinking of the, well, again, what are called mm -hmm. the grooming gangs, but are the rape gangs, uh, which struck in Rotherham, in Rochdale, in town after town, whose names are back in the news now. And obviously there's no excuse for the rioting. Why does nobody in government and a Labour government at that not listen to these people, at least find out what has gone so badly wrong in these areas that reports of um, who carried out this atrocity in Southport at the dance class for children, that that could ignite a country. It doesn't suggest to me that the country is in a healthy state. No, and I think trust in institutions, including the police and media, are going to plummet further after this episode. Now, let's talk about the Olympic boxing scandal involving two males with XY chromosomes who are being allowed to punch on with real women at the Paris Games. Uh, it hasn't escaped your attention this week. You wrote in the New York Post about the IOC's failures and how young women who have worked tirelessly to reach the pinnacle of their sport are having their dreams dashed. And Douglas, whether it's uh, by men who transition like Leah Thomas or in the case of these two boxers, uh, males with XY chromosomes who due to having disorders in sex development were raised as girls were observed to be girls when they were born it looks like in, in these two cases in either in, in either circumstance it's just grossly unfair for real women there, there are differences between men and women that's why yeah. we have two separate categories mm -hmm. and if someone has an xy chromosome mm -hmm. they should not in my mind be allowed anywhere near a women's competition no, and exactly. it's just extraordinary that, that we've got here. 
I mean, it's more than, I think it's 11 mm. years now since uh, Joe Rogan identified this problem in MMA, MMA fighting, uh, where a man who transitioned into being a woman and who worked as, was in the US Navy, and then, by the way, worked as a trucker to save up money for the sex change operation, um, went into MMA, female MMA fighting and was just, you know, punching the hell out of the women that he was competing against. And that's 11 years ago since that scandal blew up. And so. as you know, all of this is so connected, isn't it, Rita? Either there's the reality and you accept it, or you're made to just go along with something that is just unsustainable. It is not sustainable for, for men to be put in a ring yeah. with women in boxing competitions and not be expected to beat the hell out of the woman in question. And then obviously any sane person would say, exactly. aren't we against men beating up women for sport or anything mm -hmm. else? And the answer is yes, except apparently at the Olympic Games. And this is just the sort of thing that deranges a society. Yeah. Uh, about the only laugh I've got this week was when, uh, you know, noticed that the, I think it was in the pole vaulting, that there was a gentleman who's, who's, who's um, how can I say this politely, whose member was somewhat large and oh, not yeah. tucked in and uh, and caused a certain problem for him uh, and much amusement for others. But I was pleased to see yesterday a cartoon of somebody reporting this and, uh, the, and the, 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 the man's wife says, but is that the men's pole vaulting or the women's pole vaulting? <laughs> only, only in the Olympics in 2024 uh, would you have to ask that question. Uh, the whole thing is absurd, and I do hope the IOC looks at this again. Yeah. It's totally unfair. Anyone, I mean, I know, again, we're not meant to mention anything that's in front of our eyes, but anyone who knows anything about male and female development knows that even if you go on to some kind of hormone drug at some stage, if you've gone through development as a, 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 as a teenager, as a man, you're going to have mm -hmm. larger hands, larger uh, um, uh, um, shoulder uh, shoulders, Everything. you're going to have... a different bone density, you're going to have much more strength, all sorts of things. And it's just a fact. So I suppose mm. decent people have to decide, do we actually want to encourage a, a delusion to, to, to rule over everything? Or can we just get some sanity back? Wow, you guys, Douglas Murray has said a lot. And I hope the world finally gets its sanity back because the way the world is going is so disturbing because I don't know what a man is doing in a woman's sport. It's totally unfair to the real women that they work so hard for so many years. And a biological male who assumes he's a woman. And I hope that very soon the world will eventually come to its senses and stop allowing trans women to compete against real women because this is totally insane. But let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. And let's wrap this video up, you guys. A, a delusion to, to, to rule over everything. Or can we just get some sanity back? Well, the, at the IOC, uh, at Olympic level, uh, any elite level, there is just so much testing for illegal drugs. Uh, I don't know why they just don't reinstate the gender testing, the sex testing that they used to have before they decided they're disgraceful and they're not politically correct. And then there is no doubt whether someone is uh, has a disorder of sex development, is intersex, is uh, uh, transitioned, whatever the case may be, if they've got XY chromosomes, they will be eliminated from the women's competition. And we all know where we stand, but uh, the misinformation and the gaslighting we've seen yeah. this week has been quite astonishing. Now, I've got to ask you before you go about uh, Kamala Harris and her choice of running mate. She's picked the far left uh, governor of Minnesota. This is a man who uh, made headlines for uh, signing legislation to put tampons in boys' restrooms in schools. He backed the BLM rights, even as they destroyed Minneapolis, and who said he'd provide giant ladders, Douglas, so illegal immigrants could climb any wall Donald Trump built. Uh, this uh, choice is um, yeah. astonishing. Uh, what do you make of Tim Waltz as a future Veep? 
Well, you know, it's it's interesting when this happens is that the whole world's the media attention turns on to in, on to Tim Waltz. And you've already listed some of the the really, I mean, I think just indefensible things that he's done in his career. Of course, he will now pretend to be somebody else, just as Kamala tries to pretend to be somebody else. <laughs> but, you know, remember the intense uh, scrutiny of J.D. Vance once Trump uh, uh, nominated him as his Veep uh, choice. It was very, very interesting because, of course, everybody goes over every single little thing that Vance has ever said, and they mm. they, they they find something that offends some people, and then they blow it up. We, we should expect the same thing to be happening with Tim Waltz in the coming days. And uh, uh, we'll see if it does. Um, but it ought to. And, you know, all of this stuff that you've just listed, the bananas stuff about tampons and boys bathrooms and the and, and the BLM riot stuff and, and else, you know, if he tries to run as a law and order candidate, I would expect him to get a certain amount of pushback. But uh, um, some of the media being what it is, maybe maybe we won't. Maybe he'll be able to reinvent himself just as Kamala has been able to reinvent herself as a sparklingly uh, innovative, brilliant, successful, mm -hmm. dynamic and inspiring political leader who will lead the free world in the 21st century. Oh, look, I'm sure the media protection racket will be in full swing, but just the fact that she did not pick the most obvious candidate, uh, which may have secured her Pennsylvania, and it seems to be, Douglas, purely because of fears that picking a Jewish man who has been pro-Israel was going to cause all sorts of divisions within the Democrats, perhaps yeah. even see unrest at the Democrat National Convention. I mean, the Democrats appear to have a anti-Semitism problem that runs a lot deeper than just the squad. Well, you know, it's 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 interesting. Uh, Josh Shapiro was the name on everyone's lips. He, he's a, a very impressive politician, or quite an impressive politician, I should say. Um, uh, he, he did uh, have to do the full grovel when it turned out that at the age of 20, he had yes. said that the Palestinians uh, may not want peace all that much. Um, he rode that back and apologized for being correct at the age of 20 and made sure that he was he was uh, now incorrect. And uh, it still didn't get him the nomination. Um, yes, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, uh, is Tim Waltz able to bolster Kamala Harris's credentials on foreign policy questions um you know we're gonna see aren't we but uh, if there's any uh, uh weakness there i would very hope much hope that it would be exposed as it would on either side you know this is yeah. this is 90 days yeah. left of this and as as you know and everyone watching knows uh, these are long weeks uh, at the moment in which anything can happen mm. and three months is a heck of a long time in uh kamala world and we don't need her to explain to us quite <laughs> how long time can be. No, please not. Douglas Murray, thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you. That was such an interesting one from Douglas Murray. And um, what are your thoughts on Kamala Harris, VP pick? Do you think they will make a good pair against Trump and J.D. Vance? Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.